This is the first session on um, of our five session online um, simulation workshop about Formula One car design. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm David and um, let's dive into it. The, this uh, um, session today, it's, an, it's a one hour session, will be mainly about aerodynamics. So the role of aerodynamics in Formula One, we will show um, how to set up um, an aerodynamics analysis of a Formula One car, of the Perrin Formula One car um, today live and um, during the next four sessions, so um, it's always at the same time on Thursday. Let's dive into it. Today's agenda is that um, first our special guest today, um, Nicolas Perrin, um, who will take over um, the moderation in a few minutes, will uh, talk about his project, his company um, and his work as a Formula One car designer and um, he's also the go-to guy today um, to address any questions uh, on the role of aerodynamics in Formula One um, and whatever you ever wanted to know um, about a, a Formula One car designer, um, reach out to him. Uh, the second step will then be, the second part will be uh, Nick presenting about the role of aerodynamics in um, Formula One car design. Um, let's say some basics and some, we'll, we'll dive into it a bit. Um, then the second part, uh, the third part will be um, a practical hands-on simulation setup of an aerodynamics analysis with SimScale. Um, and I'll try to give a, or I'll uh, give a live demo how to use SimScale to set up um, such an external aerodynamics analysis. Fourth part will again be Nick uh, presenting um, some some results, uh, some aerodynamics results, and what kind of uh, and, and s sort of uh, how how they analyze it and what kind of design decisions they make with um, these sorts of results. The fifth part will then be um, presented by um, my colleague Milad, who will also who's also here. Um, and the sixth part will then be um, a question and answer session. This workshop today is really about um, getting interesting insights into the role of simulation in Formula One car design. So this means really um, uh, Nick uh, will explain a bit about uh, how this is used, give a, give a top level um, uh, idea um, of how aerodynamics analysis is used in um, Formula One car design and um, then uh, we here at SimScale are responsible for that you guys have a, get a first hands-on experience with simulation um, with the SimScale platform so we really want you to have some hands-on um, experience and ideally do some simulation projects on your own. Um, then the Explicitly to say what this workshop is not about is really um, a detailed training on simulation theory. Um, so we won't dive into the, um, let's say, how a finite volume method works, into the mathematics behind it, um, etc. Um, we also won't go into a detailed training on practical application of simulation. So this means um, we really, within one hour, and with these technical issues, even a bit less, um, we really have the problem of, um, uh, we really, or have the challenge to that we want to show you a complete simulation setup, but we don't have the time to really dive into detail into how you fix your CAD models, how you ideally prepare your CAD models, um, and, and into some advanced topics of the simulation itself. It's also not possible to go in there. Um, so it's really not about a detailed, um, a detailed uh, training. It's rather about a top-level workshop, but afterwards you guys can run your simulations yourself. So that you, um, yeah, um, get uh, nevertheless um, a real hands-on experience out of it. Um, um, people asked us before, <laughs> um, why this workshop? Um, first of all, sure, um, we want you, uh, we want to introduce you to um, to, uh, per, uh, to Perrin and to his project, and he is also looking for collaborators and, and people working with him. Um, we ourselves, sure, um, we also um, make a, a living from uh, simulation software. So whenever um, some of you have commercial projects um, you want to use uh, simulation software for, um, uh, we would be happy if you consider SimScale, but mainly um, the second part, um, Sim the SimScale platform is a young product and um, we've developed it for um, quite some time, but still um, as it's completely web-based, we're really looking for feedback of our users, we're really looking for people that um, use it for real-world Formula One or real-world uh, general engineering uh, projects run their simulations and so we're really eager um, to hear from you um, how you set up your simulations, what you liked about it, what you didn't like, um, suggestions, um, etc. And then last but not least, 
each um, each session will end with one homework, and um, we're looking for people that uh, like to contribute to our simulation library. I'll show you later what this is, but it's basically we're building an online library of um, public simulation projects, and if some of you guys want to contribute their um, their simulation projects, their homework projects to the library, um, that would be great, and it would be showcased um, in it. But I'll I'll show it I'll show it to you later. A quick how-to on this workshop. Um, so how does this workshop work? Um, we have five of these sessions, again, ideally with less technical issues the next time. Um, each session ends with an optional homework assignment, so it's not something, some mandatory or something. It's just, an, let's say, an, an, an offer from us um, where you can get a... Um, where you can get a, let's say, a, a prepared CAD model that you can use for simulation and where we want to trigger your work, we want to trigger you setting up your own simulation cases on SimScale. Um, once you, if you decide to, to complete the homework assignment, um, you can uh, share it with workshops at simscale.com. Um, I'll show you later how, what this, what it exactly means to to share it with workshops at simscale.com. But um, that's that's for later. Um, quick, a few questions um, because really the the feedback to this webinar was overwhelming. Uh, you saw that we <laughs> we weren't prepared for so many, um, but uh, it's it's great that we uh, and that many people are interested in that topic. And um, so uh, a question that comes often is if this workshop will be recorded. Yes, we're going to record it. Um, nevertheless, uh, we uh, and you you'll find a download link um, after the workshop series. So once the whole workshop is over, you will get um, the links to the videos, um, and we probably put them in YouTube or somewhere where you can find them easily. Um, the next question we were asked a lot if we if um, people already need a prepared CAD model um, for that they can start simulating during the workshop, um, and. I would say, um, or, or my suggestion would be, or for sure, you can simulate during the workshop. You can already log into SimScale and, and, and follow it. But I would um, recommend not doing it, but rather following the workshop, as it's just one hour. We are explaining a lot, and um, I would say you should um, you should follow it closely. And all the steps for setting such an external aerodynamics analysis will work also uh, are also documented in our official documentation. So you can access um, you can access that later. Um, the third question was, how can I simulate myself? Um, the, 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 the software we are writing, so the, um, the platform we are building, is really completely web-based. So SimScale works completely via the web. Um, it comes with a, um, so you can just create your own account at, at SimScale.com. Um, log in and every um, basically attendee, every participant of this workshop um, will get um, free computing power for the, during, during the workshop, so a specific computing quota um, that you can use to simulate, to run your own simulations. And um, yeah, how do I hand in my homework? Um, you can, yeah, I'll, I'll show it later. Um, you can share a project. So once you've completed your simulation homework um, on SimScale, I, um, you can later share it with um, with uh, one of our users, and I'll, I'll explain that how that works later. Um, what if I have trouble setting up my simulation? So depending on if you decide to set up your own CAD model and, and run your own CAD model, um, it's it can be tricky to set up the simulation. You could also might uh, yeah might come to a point where you uh, don't know how to proceed. Um, that's not a problem. We are here to help. So um, you can either reach out to us or um, use the social channels and reach out to us. Um, and we are we are happy to help. Um, we get tremendous feedback to this workshop. So I hope we can um, uh, we can handle the questions. But um, we are really we're doing our best to um, to to make your simulation on some skills successful. And um, how can I learn more about the topics that are not covered here? Um, you will see during the next forty minutes. Um, that very often um, I'm, I'm going to say that um, we need to need to stop it here, and uh, because we it's it's um, too detailed to explain within one hour. Um, but you can um, yeah you can uh, you can read up more if you if you like. And um, there are multiple ways to learn more um, uh, than the topics covered in this um, issue here today. For example, we have a YouTube channel. Um, we have a uh, yeah, we have a, um, an official documentation uh, where a, a lot of tutorials uh, can be seen. We have a, um, a public project library and, and all those things. So um, there are multiple uh, places where you can get help on, um, 
um, yeah, or, or a way can you learn more um, about the SynScale platform. Okay. So that's basically it for for the introduction. Um, uh, just a quick because some people still tend to have issues with the sound. Um, there are people ask that. Um, ah, <laughs> okay, it's great that <laughs> that many people don't have <laughs> don't have problems with the sound. Thanks, but apparently some have. It's also um, a, a possibility to dial in via the phone. So. Um, in this, in the emails you got from from this go to webinar software, there should also be um, a sound, uh, a, um, a dial in number that you can use um, for for dialing in in case your um, your computer doesn't work. Maybe that's another try. Okay, um, moving on. Um, so we come to um, to Nicholas. Um, so and now comes the next technical challenge to transfer <laughs> Nicholas the presentation. Uh, Nick, bear with me for a second. Um, let me quickly change. Uh, so, Nicholas, can you hear us? Can you hear me now? Ah, loud and clear. Good. Nicholas, um, I, I didn't um, introduce you because I thought it's better when you introduce yourself, so maybe um, just give the, the audience a quick heads up. Um, what, what can we see on screen now? Sorry, um, I've lost the screen. <laughs> um, we see, cr yeah. Can we see the presentation now? Yeah, yeah, now we can see it, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, well, hi everyone. Um, well, first of all, uh, thanks uh, to the SimScale uh, team for having me today. Uh, it's very nice to uh, to be able to um, to do this workshop um, with you guys. Um, uh, let me talk about uh, Perrin and uh, and myself. Well, uh, I'm Nick Perrin. I'm uh, an engineer in motorsport. I've been working. Um, at the top level of motorsports for the last 15 years, uh, mainly in Formula One and also at Le Mans in LMP1. Um, I've started as a, as a race engineer, so really being the user of the car on track and working on setups and uh, with drivers. So that was my first role in, uh, at Williams in Formula One. Uh, but I was, I, was too, I was really interested as well in the whole project and, and make sure the car uh, was good enough um, for for you know to be able to achieve uh, success. So I I turned into a designer, uh, which helped me to have an overview on the project. So I was also an aerodynamicist, um, worth designing um, you know parts for the car, tested in the wind tunnel. And I am actually back as well in Formula One now uh, with the Manor Formula One team uh, as their chief engineer. Um, so I'm responsible for. Overview, overviewing the engineering side on the racetrack. Uh, Perrin Limited is, is a company I've created four years ago. Uh, and uh, it, it's a long-term project. Uh, what is Perrin is, well, it's quite easy. It's a, it's a racing team. We are a team. Uh, it's what we are. It's also our message. Um, and uh, we, we want to create a team that's completely different from, from the established racing team in the world. Uh, we basically, we want to open the team so that anybody can uh, become a member and we effectively operate the racing team with people that are not just under one, uh, under one roof in one location, uh, but actually anybody in this world can, can uh, be part of the team. Uh, so we, it's a team of people and organizations. Uh, we have uh, more than 250 um, active members from 30 countries, uh, which is uh, really satisfying for me uh, to see that it's got it's gone quite global. Um, and and we had about 50,000 you know people visiting our website when we announced a year ago our intention, our plans. Um, we want to race in both Formula One and at Le Mans in um, LMP1. So we are looking at designing, 
building and raising uh, the top end racing cars because this is what I know and this is where I think we can be successful but again uh, we're going to use um, resources energy from from the people we want to share uh, what we're doing we want to send the message we have a team which is more than just a racing team it's also saying if we can gather uh, you know all these people with the same goal of success uh, we can do very well I'm very confident that we can design um, the cars that will allow us to be successful uh, but we are going further and sharing with people um, to create this very unique team so people can come on our website and, and start to become part of the team this way can you see the new slide now just to check okay okay uh, so again when you're in the team it's it's like in any team you have access to the team server uh, you receive messages through uh, email which is the, the best way to communicate in a high performance team that's what we're doing in Formula One in any Formula One team send a lot of emails and communicate this way and uh, in the future we'll have a TV channel as well so people can follow live what's what is happening uh, when we start building the cars at the moment we have designed uh, an LMP1 car for Le Mans and a Formula 1 car the LMP1 car is very uh, complete we've spent three full years designing it uh, the Formula 1 car is, is at conceptual level we have spent about three months on it so on, on our server you can really access um, uh, you know all the details of what we're doing from the, the car design all the components in 3D format uh, but also engineering data um, uh, aerodynamic CFD results um, just so that everybody can have the same level of information uh, as if you were inside a team again the uh, the team we're creating the community of people is, is our assets uh, the way we're going to operate with the funding and the resources is, is the same way as other teams. You know, we're going to find sponsors and partners, but obviously the fact that we have this very strong community is our unique selling point. So our members are very important to us. Okay. Uh, the role of aerodynamics in, in Formula One um, and, and of CFD. Um, well, aerodynamics is one of the main parameters of performance in Formula One. Um, you've got tires, you've got engine, and you've got aerodynamics. And it's, it obviously makes a huge difference if you have a good aerodynamic package or not, not such a good one. What we use is typically wings um, and, and ground effects uh, at the bottom of the car. So wings is, is, is quite a simple mechanism by which um, part of the air going over the wing is slowing down and part of the air going under the wing is accelerating. And that is changing the static pressure of the air itself and the differential between high and low pressure across the wing is creating this force, the, so suction on one side and pressure on the other side, and that pushes the car down. Um, to give you an example, if we wouldn't have any, any aerodynamics on the car, we would probably, a Formula One car, uh, would go around the racetrack probably 10 to 20 seconds slower um, if a lap time is about 1 minute 20 seconds. It would be about 20 seconds slower around the lap, so it's very significant. Uh, you cannot, you, you know, you cannot not have it. Um, just the grip of the tire would give you, you know, lateral acceleration of about two Gs in corners. But because of aerodynamics, we can go up to four Gs. Um, one of the main things we are using as well is the ground effect, um, and that is basically having the ground very close to the car and that creates a section, a closed section under the car and at the back of it is a diffuser 
Um, so it's very powerful. It creates downfalls and very low drag. And it's the same mechanism as, a, um, as the wing. But obviously, with the added um, fact that we have a closed section and that the ground is closing that section. So it's a very efficient way to create downfalls. Um, one of the fundamentals as well is that we have to go to different racing tracks. Um, if you take two extremes, we go to Monaco and we go to Monza. So these are tracks that will require very different settings on the front wing and the rear wings. The reason is because we try to optimize the lap time and we look at how much level of downforce is created when you change the setting of the wing relative to how much drag is added or removed. Um, and this is the way we analyze where we should be on what we call the wing curve uh, to, to have an optimum lap time, which is why you see the cars with very small wings at Monza, because there's a lot of straight lines, so you need to reduce drag and very big wings at uh, Monaco. And C CFD is, uh, is obviously um, paramount in, in this process. You have to know that uh, these days we use CFD probably for 50% of our development time. The other 50% is wind tunnel. Uh, 15 years ago, it was probably nearly 100% wind tunnel. So we are shifting, shifting more and more towards CFD. Um, at Perrin Limited, we use exclusively CFD uh, because we we think and we know it's it's what's going to happen to all um, manufacturers. Everybody will use more and more CFD. Obviously, as the computing power increasing increases and uh, the software gets better, so we are investing a lot into CFD. Okay, so I think um, that, that, that's it for me. <laughs> and that was the perfect uh, transition to us, right? Um, all right, um, Nick, I would take over the presentation again. Fine for you? Sure, thanks. All right. Um, all right. There have been a few people saying the audio is not working. <laughs> again, I'm sorry. Could you give me a hand if people are, if the audio is working for people? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks. All right, great. So, um, to the people where the audio is not working, I'm very sorry, uh, or um, uh, you might try to dial in um, or tweak the settings on your end, um, but for um, for most of the audience, it's working. Yeah. Okay, um, we're we're all we're a bit behind our time schedule, so let's move on. Um, as Nick just mentioned, um, CFD, so computational fluid dynamics, um, so basically a virtual um, or, or let's a virtual simulation of um, of the flow behavior um, is used. And um, today, this is also the main part of the or this is the the title of the of the webinar today. And I want to just show a quick um, uh, a qu this quick slide, um, which basically shows what we are about to do in a few seconds. Um, this is basically um, a quick overview of the workflow that we can see with SimScale, um, that we can do with SimScale. So the first one is um, a CAD model upload. So basically what, what we will do now in the next um, 50 minutes is we will set up an aerodynamics analysis where we are interested in how does the airflow go around <clears throat> this car and what kind of drag and lift is created by the airflow, what kind of parts of the car um, do uh, create a lot of drag, etc. So it's really about, um, as Nick said, basically a virtual version of a real wind tunnel test. And um, we will be able to visualize the, the velocity field, the pressure, um, and um, yeah, assess basically how, how our car design is working. Um, just to show you the three main steps, so we will start um, dialing into SimScale. We will upload a CAD model um, of the of uh, the Perrin Formula One car. <clears throat> we will set up um, a computational mesh for it. I'll explain in a second a bit more what this is. Um, we will basically specify the physics of this mesh. So where's the flow coming in? What kind of velocity does the flow have, etc.? And then the last step is a um, basically the post-processing, which means um, once we have 
um, the simulation carried out, we want to have a look at um, how does the pressure field looks like, how does the velocity field looks like, um, and, and just to, to show you basically once the complete workflow. The um, maybe just a heads up before I dive into uh, to the actual setup. Um, such a simulation um, really takes takes can take hours, um, depending on how fine um, you set the mesh, so how accurate you want to basically run your simulation, um, and how many yeah and, and uh, different parameters decide on the length of the simulation, and it really can take uh, literally hours to compute. So this is why um, we basically prepared everything. Um, already. I will nevertheless show you um, steps I would use to set up the simulation that you could get a good overview, but um, we completely carried out the complete simulation to just save time because otherwise there would be quite some, quite some breaks in between. Okay, um, then let's get started uh, with the actual um, live work. As I said, um, it's really not necessary that you um, that you log in yourself right now. Rather, um, rather follow the the workshop, and I'll hint you to a um, section in our documentation later where you can find this aerodynamic setup, this simulation, and you can have a step by step instruction later. Um, as I said, SimScale completely works um, web-based, so you just go to simscale.com. Um, if you don't have an account yet, you can create one here. Oh, bear with me. Um, you can create one here. Um, it's for free. Um, in there, you can start a free uh, trial run to get the full um, computing power, to get the full functionality. Um, if you already used it, or if you um, yeah, and, and want to refresh it, re refresh it, uh, let us know. Um, we'll take care of it. That you have the computing power for this um, for the workshop. Also, a quick shout out at that point. There's also an academic program. This means SimScale is completely for free for academic use. So, in case you're a student or a teacher, um, there is a a small checkbox while you sign up um, where you can say I'm a student or a teacher and then you'll basically have um, computing power and functionality all you need for this workshop. Um, so once we log in, um, we basically see this here. This is the workspace. We call it workspace. This basically is a project overview and you can see I already have some projects in here. Um, the, where I started um, already the, the simulation, so I have once the, the Formula One full car with simple rims, I'll show you later what this means, um, where we start, then a partly um, created project, a partly finished project, and in the end a completed project to show you really all steps, um, but not have to wait all the time for the computing to, to finish. Um, Basically, the workflow on SimScale is always the same. You start with a CAD model, which so geometries, so you, you have a 3D modeling system um, or, or a CAD software where you create CAD models in. Um, you export them there and you upload them to SimScale. Um, this is the, what we call the geometries. From the geometries, you create meshes. We will do that in a second. Um, this, is, uh, this is done in the mesh creator. From the mesh, you create a simulation. This is done in the simulation designer, so where it's all about the physics, here's the flow coming in, here's it going out, um, this is the kinematic viscosity, etc. And then the post processor that is currently in beta mode for the actual analysis of the, um, of the simulation results. Um, so let's get right at it. Um, this is already basically uh, prepared. Let me check. Um, uh, so I already uploaded the cap model of SimScale um, uh, of the of the Formula One car, and uh, let's see. I'll just go over here. Um, mm -hmm. So um, basically, I, what I did is I used my local CAD system. We will later um, also show you which CAD systems we use because we have some recommendations that you could use um, if, in case you currently don't have access uh, to a CAD system to do the homework, for example. Um, here I uploaded it as, um, as an, in an STL format, and it basically appears in my 3D viewer on SimScale. And this is really this is web-based, yeah. So I can. Um, interact with it in 3D, and um, yeah, here I start basically uh, um, with the workflow in SimScale. Um, you already recognize that there are basically there are the rims missing and also some details. Nick, I hope uh, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> we basically simplified it a bit, um, just to make the computing time a bit um, faster. Um, and also, just also to be to be completely honest, at that point, the CAT pre preparation for simulation can also be. Um, 
can be uh, challenging, especially if the geometry is very complex, you have a lot of fine details that you want to simulate. Um, this, is, uh, this is definitely something that is challenging um, and there is a lot of material and a lot of documentation and tutorials on um, the SimScale documentation where you can find more on that. But um, bear with me, this is basically um, already quite well prepared and we'll directly dive into um, the mesh generation for it. Uh, so we go ahead and say um, we want to mesh this geometry and it automatically creates a new mesh and we say um, we will now carry out a hex dominant mesh operation so we'll give that a meaningful name oh oh sorry sorry um, this one was it that I want so it's called the automatic snappy hex mesh for external flow this mesh operation and um, the point is the the, to, to talk about mesh meshing and, and a mesh generation for finite volume analysis or for CFD um, simulation, uh, that could be the um, that could be a whole training or a whole course. So I'm really um, we're really just scratching the surface here right now. But what it basically means is that we discretize um, this air domain around the car. Um, to be able to compute um, you know, to to solve for the velocity and the pressure field um, within uh, around this car and um, for to to be able to do that we'll need um, a mesh and there are different operations that we can use on SimScale to generate a mesh to generate this virtual wind tunnel and um, I'll show you how this works so I'll save my mesh operation and now I say um, okay I want to basically create now this virtual wind tunnel around my car. And um, here you can see that this is not a good wind tunnel as it would as it only covers the nose of the car. So we'll basically tweak this wind tunnel that it covers the whole side of the mesh. Um, so let's check. Um, okay, um, that length seems looks good. So basically, we want this, the flow going over here and then behind it. And so we basically want to know more about how the velocity and the pressure do look like um, around this car. Um, so the length uh, in x direction is already fine. So I could also make it longer, shorter, um, but 8 to 20, something that looks good. Um, moving on, I'll have the epsilon direction. Um, we could also simulate the whole car. So I have a wind tunnel uh, around the complete car, but as it's um, as it's symmetric, the car, um, we will just we will simplify the computing process by just um, looking at the half of the of the Formula One car. So basically, what I'll do is I say, okay, the virtual wind tunnel shall directly go through the middle of this car and um, five meters to the outside. That looks good. Yeah. That, that looks good. And basically, so we will just be able to, to see the flow going, um, going on around here and not on the other side, but um, it's basically a simplification. We say we assume that the airflow around it goes completely symmetric, <clears throat> which is um, a, a valid um, a valid simplification at that point. Um, okay, then let's look at the height of the wind tunnel. That looks okay. So this is now basically the domain, <clears throat> the part where I later want to, um, yeah, want to know the velocity and the pressure in this um, in this domain. Um, okay, base mesh box is defined for this mesh operation and then you can see it's called automatic snappy hex mesh for external flow. So what this means is that it's a very, very automated mesh operation. And it really means that it's a very simple mesh operation. So I just have to basically specify this, this wind tunnel and I have just a few, three more settings that I can choose um, to carry out this mesh. And this on the one hand side is pretty neat because you can very, very automatically uh, generate a mesh uh, for your simulation. But on the other hand side, you do not have enough options. Um, for example, just, just to explain, um, when the airflow is going over this car, we will have a lot of turbulent effects um, here at the, and a lot of vortices happening here behind the car. So we would be interested in having a many cells, so a lot, uh, an accurate mesh at the at the um, end of this car. And um, this mesh operation doesn't know that. So it will just basically refine around this car because it detects it, but um, it won't um, refine um, later um, over here. And um, therefore, we need another mesh operation, but I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so let's um, um, start uh, going into it. Um, we see, you see it's very, very easy. I'll just say, okay, I want to have a fine mesh 
Um, I'll say, I, no, I don't want any layers, and we also won't go into detail um, what, what the layers are. Um, and the last option I choose is the number of processors I want to run this on. And this is the neat thing about being really cloud-based or being web-based um, with SimScale. So you can really choose on what kind of computer, what kind of machine you would like to use to carry out um, this process. And in our case, I will take an 8-core machine and say, okay, um, that's fine, so please carry out this operation on the 8-core machine. And the last step now is basically to say um, start. And I can see here in the lower right um, that my changes were saved, my, um, my operation gets started, and in the lower left in the job status box I can see now that my mesh operation is carried out. Um, this will now take a couple of minutes. Um, now it's computing, so basically it's been, it's been now computed on an 8-core machine um, remotely, so your local computer is not used at all. Um, let's speed up a bit. Um, I'll switch over to a partly finished project where I basically have the exact same um, operation we just did. You, know? um, you can see automatic for external, it's fine, no layers and on eight cores. And this is what you will get after a few um, after a few minutes. Um, and here you can see it's loading, so it's genera it's showing me now this virtual wind tunnel, and this is exactly what I would expect, right? This was the box we specified. We can see now this um, this volume has been discretized with a lot of small cells um, that, that are necessary to run this CFD analysis. And let's look in the inside. We can see that only half of the car is um, is meshed, what we would have expected, and here we can see that this auto, that this very automatic operation really took care of the car, so that it's um, that it's refined. So you can see we have very uh, large cells out here, getting finer, getting finer, getting finer, and in here uh, we have very fine cells. So in general, um, that actually looks good, right? Um, but if you look look into the details, and if you also would, um, there are other options on SimScale to check on the mesh quality, we can see that it doesn't look that nice um, at the details here, and um, that's that's not what you want, these very skewed cells um, here and at the details, so um, it's it's okay for a first run, but it's definitely uh, uh, something that I would want to look um, at a later point um, in this project. And just to show you that SimScale offers you different options um, to, to simulate, um, I'll use another mesh that I generated also, where I used a manual, a manual um, operation where you have a lot of more options that you can use, um, and uh, to where I refined um, some some specifics of this mesh to, to really, let's say, um, have uh, in the end a, a, a bad, yeah simply a, a mesh that will lead to more accurate results. Um, and you can also see that it has more cells, so it's taking a bit longer to load. And um, I want to show you just a quick glance at this, um, where we can see that uh, once the cells are loaded, um, that I basically took care of this of this region around the car. So I not just said um, I want to have it close to the car refined, but also in the wake of it, yeah, where I expect some some turbulent effects. This is also where I want to have a fine uh, mesh. I took care of the ground, so I have some more cells at the at the ground, and all those things um, is it's possible to specify them here. And also it's a bit finer, so I have the details better resolved. But nevertheless, I could even go go more detailed. So this one has five million cells, which is definitely not a lot, not a lot. So probably I would um, take even more cells to 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 make that a very high quality mesh. Okay, but um, for this time um, it's fine. So we are basically done with the mesh generation for our wind tunnel, and now comes the actual simulation setup. Um, so let's quickly go back to the <clears throat> to our slides and make a quick wrap up. So what we did is basically now um, we uh, uploaded a CAD model um, and uh, created a mesh for it. Um, what we sh what we saw is basically um, that we used the automatic hex dominant mesh operation. There are um, a bunch of mesh operations also for for other analysis types, <clears throat> um, but um, we we showed that one and there we got a brief overview over the manual meshing options and we saw how to set up such an external um, aerodynamics mesh and there are I mean there are many other options that you can use and, and operations to generate meshes for other um, simulation types explicitly um, as I said as the um, as the workshop just has an hour um, what we didn't show is really cat cleaning um, preparations so or how do you really make sure that it's watertight etc it's we just don't have enough time for that. Also, how to assess the mesh quality, um, how to steer the refinements of meshes and also um, mesh zones, which is also an advanced topic. <clears throat> 
Um, so, let's move on. We don't have much time, so we'll now directly move over to the simulation setup, having this mesh created. Um, as you can see, I already prepared one, but let's start one simulation quickly from scratch. What I would now say is, I really want to m run a, um, um, a flow um, analysis, uh, let's say, at 40 meters per second. Huh? And so you can see on SimScale, you don't, it's, it's, it's a quite um, simple, simply structured user interface. So you don't have a lot of options. It's really a template-based way of setting up simulations. And you can see there are many other uh, simulations you can run. And we will use them in one of the next, um, in the next uh, webinars. But today, we are really interested in running incompressible fluid flow um, analysis. Incompressible, you might, you might say it's air. But um, bear with me, in, with these low velocities, it's fine to assume um, the density of air is not changing. So a standard setup is really to say, I'm using an incompressible flow analysis time. I'll go with a turbulence model. I'll say it's um, a steady state approach, um, which basically means I neglect the changes over time. I, I'm just interested in how, after, an, let's say, an, uh, an eternal time, how would the flow around <clears throat> this car look like? Um, also, the turbulence model, I really have to speed up at that point. I'm very sorry. Um, it's basically, it's it's quite advanced model, turbulence modeling, um, and will be also covered in um, the, the manifold um, workshop. Uh, that's um, the next, or the, the one after after the next, and we will go a bit more into turbulence modeling. But for now, let's save that. Um, and now we see that basically what now happened is that we've uh, been provided with a complete template for the simulation. So it really shows us the red stuff, the red points we need to define, the green points are already defined, and the blue ones are optional. And this is really what I, uh, I want to stress. Um, um, this is always the same on SimScale. You choose an analysis type, um, you save it, you get a, um, a complete um, template, and you just work your way from top to bottom. Um, so let's do that that way, and I'll speed up a bit. Um, first is the domain. So where actually shall the simulation run? And uh, we can see that we have our two meshes available. And for now, I will go with our with the one I already created. So the one that is a bit better in terms of um, <clears throat> in terms of uh, resolution, in terms of mesh quality, and moving on. Um, we can see I already prepared that mesh um, by setting um, so so called um, topological entity sets. This basically means just I grouped the the faces of my mesh. You can see that I have um, that I have different patches. So I have this one here on top. I have um, this one in the middle. I have here on the side, and I can um, interact with them. And what I will do in a second is basically I have to explain or I have to set up the simulation saying the the flow comes in here, um, the uh, flow goes out here. Um, in the middle, here's uh, a symmetric uh, assumption. So the, the whole flow is uh, supposed to be symmetric here. Um, and here, I'm basically saying this is far field, so um, the flow can do whatever it wants at that point. Not not completely true, but um, we'll, we'll come to that in a second. And um, so just to show you, I can see that this is the inlet. I called that one inlet. I called um, that one symmetry. Uh, I called um, these on top. called them the sides. Um, I called this at the bottom the floor. Oh, not floor, sorry. Floor, etc. Uh, it's just, it basically... Um, it simplifies my work, otherwise I would always have to click here, you know? um, just um, that point. Okay, moving on. Um, here, um, the next point is the model, where I choose would choose the kinematic viscosity of air. Um, I right now don't have it at hand, so we'll just move on. We will start. We will not start that simulation, so you, you, you would look up the kinematic viscosity online. Moving on uh, to the initial conditions, which basically means how does the flow behave um, at the start of the simulation. And, um, the pressure is supposed to be zero. Um, that uh, comes from the fact that we are running an incompressible flow analysis, and this implies that the that the absolute value of the pressure um, is not relevant. It's just the differences. Also, this is also covered in the documentation um, and could also be t covered in one of the next workshops. Um, but for now, just bear with me. We will leave the pressure at zero. The velocity, we won't. Um, we'll see that the flow goes in x direction. So we say, in the whole flow domain, we want. Oh, sorry. That was epsilon. In the whole flow domain, we want the flow to be initialized with 40 meters per second into x direction. Huh? And this means this is the initial state where the simulation will start from. 
Um, we will ignore for now k and omega. Um, this has also been sent to you. This will also be uh, um, available in the documentation that you can look up or on, on our YouTube videos. But these are um, basically turbulent um, physical quantities where I'm basically specifying the turbulent um, quantities in this um, in this field. Um, I just want to give you a top level overview as we are <laughs> already running out of time. I'm very sorry. Um, I want to show you one um, a last point: how to actually set up such a boundary condition. So to say um, initial conditions, we specified now the initial state of the within the, the flow domain. And um, the now it's about what happen what happens at the boundaries of this um, of this flow domain. And this is really all about saying this is the inlet, there's the outlet, here's the symmetry, etc. And how this works, I, I want to demonstrate on one boundary condition. So I say I'll add a velocity boundary condition saying um, this is my velocity inlet or Let's call it U, U inlet. And I have different options that I could choose. And for now, I'm going with a fixed value um, boundary condition, saying um, I want to have an inlet going in here um, that has an x direction that has 40 meters per second. And at this one, at this inlet, uh, safe. And it automatically shows me, aha, uh -huh, U inlet is checked. So it's, it's fine. Uh, it's it's uh, fully set up. Um, and now I would basically say, what is the, uh, the initial condition up here, uh, the boundary condition here? What is the boundary condition here at the bottom and at the outlet? And I would do that for all physical quantities. That really the problem is well defined. That it um, has initial conditions and it has boundary conditions for each um, physical variable uh, for which the simulation will solve for. Um, I don't have the time to completely now set it up, <laughs> partly because it's um, um, it's because of the technical issues. We're running almost a bit out of time, but also um, since the concept is always the same. Here you can see a simulation that I completely set up. Yeah? I said U inlet. You can see inlet, um, so it's defined here. That's fine. Um, the I said um, a fixed value um, at the floor at the car. Let's look at the yeah and say for example um, select assignment and. I can also see, aha, uh -huh, the floor and at the inside here, the car. And so I basically, for, for velocity, pressure, um, K and omega, I specify the physical quantities um, at all boundaries. And this is, that, that might sound a bit complex at that point, um, but it's really once you get your head around and once you uh, made um, a tutorial, um, maybe a YouTube tutorial or one of our documentation, um, it will get more obvious how this, um, how this works. Um, all right, and last but not least, I can now say, okay, please check the simulation. Um, I want uh, to create now a new run. That's my 40 meter per second run. And I would click on start. And what would now happen is again, same for mesh operation. Um, I get a, um, a simulation starting on a 32 core machine um, that is being started basically in, um, uh, also again on a remote uh, on a remote machine and that's also again nice I don't have to have this 32 core machine on my local computer I can just use um, uh, leverage remote computing power to run that okay um, and just to show you how that looks like once it's fully completed here I have a simulation you can see um, a steady state simulation with 9 million cells so an even finer mesh that is completed so let's have a look at that one just to show you how it looks once it's done I can see it's completed I get an information about the convergence plot and I can then download the results or use the online post processor the online post processor is right now in beta um, because it doesn't provide enough filters um, so um, it's uh, you, you can use it, but for um, full, fully fledged post processing, we recommend downloading the results and assessing them via a local um, post processing software. But let's first look at the um, uh, make a quick wrap up of the simulation setup. What we basically saw is now um, how it basically works on SimScale. So you create a new simulation, you choose an analysis type, you save it, and then you basically work your way from top to bottom. We saw how to set up initial conditions. We saw one boundary condition assignment, um, which basically means, okay, here's inlet, here's the outlet, etc. And then we started a simulation. Um, to be honest, really, it's, it's, it was very, very brief. <laughs> So um, that's, um, uh, that's just not enough time to go into detail. What we completely left out is really this simulation won't um, show any rotating wheels, which is also possible that really you, um, you consider the wheels rotating. And the radiators can be modeled also um, within a simulation. 
using porous zones, um, which is also an advanced topic. Um, also, there are a lot of tweaks you can do to the, to the actual solver, and also we could run such a simulation also transient, so meaning that we really check on the airflow and how it behaves over time and not just looking at the state of equilibrium. Um, and these advanced topics are, is really something um, that where I highly recommend looking into to the documentation or um, joining one of the another uh, public webinars to, to dive more into these topics. Um, and yeah, it's just not possible within such a short amount of time to dive into these topics. All right. Um, so what we basically did now is um, we ran the simulation. It took a few hours. It came back. Um, we downloaded the results. And for local post processing, we're using a, um, a software called Paraview. It's open source, so you can download it. Um, just Google it, or you can also find a link on our website to paraview.org. Um, and uh, you can just download it. And all the results from SimScale can natively import it into into um, Paraview. So, um, and let's, um, and now here is really, Nick is the, the, um, the professional in here, um, so I will in, in a few minutes hand over the presentation again to Nick. Um, and the, uh, and the, um, I, I just want to basically give a brief overview. And Nick, I'm not sure, I think you should still be on the mic, right? Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Um, so, Nick, I'll maybe if you want to comment on something, I'll just give a brief overview and feel free to jump into that. Afterwards, there are also a few slides from the results you computed. Uh. Yes, yes. So what we see here is basically the pressure value. Um, so and we can see that where exactly at this car um, the uh, high pressure appears, and we can see where, um, yeah, basically what we would expect, right? And we can dive into detail here. We can see the the lower pressure um, under the wing, um, the high pressure on top of the wing. We could now also now for sure uh, dig into more the, the, the let's say quantitative analysis. But um, for now, just bear with me. I'll just move over to the um, let's so once the downforce, and you can see that this local um, machine is also using really really. So this is a local software, and it's really using a lot of. Um, um, a lot of time to to show that because I mean all it, this this simulation run uh, was using nine million cells so it's a huge data set um, that is shown and um, this yeah just really takes um, takes power to to visualize and here we can see the downforce which is basically one of the highlights probably of such a of such an analysis we can see that um, for sure the wings are generating a lot of downforce we can see that um, so basically uh, the force uh, moving down we can see the parts um, and by the way these wheels are not rotating, so um, just to, to bear that, to keep that in mind, we can see that here a um, uh, force upside up is created, and this is also what we expect, right, what we, what we heard from, from Nick um, in the beginning. Um, last point, Nick, and then I would hand over to you. Um, it's also possible to basically visualize really the, the, um, the flow field behind the car, so we can see here these Vortice, this vortex structure that is appearing here, and what we would expect, and we could now really dive into all the details of such an of such a simulation result. Um, and with that, Nick, <laughs> I think you are really the go-to guy to these topics. Um, either you want to, do, if, in case you want to show something here with the 3D car, um, feel free. Otherwise, we'll go back to the presentation um, to the to the slides of your result. Yeah, I think the slides, if we can. Mm -hmm, sure. Um, let me hand over the presentation to you. Um, whoop. Okay. All right. So, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks, David. So, uh, I'll try and be. Uh, I'll try and be um, quick. Um, I'm trying to tell you just what we are doing when we are getting the, the results from CM CFD. Just as a as a designer, what are we looking? Uh, for and uh, basically we we are trying to get some um, uh, directions into which area of the car we want to uh, to to improve and try uh, alternative solutions. Um, so typically we are looking at pictures of the car, like on the screen, which is pressure on the skin of the car, and we'd also look into uh, uh, movies showing the, um, uh, the the pressure and the velocity. In the in the fields of air around the car, so I'll, I'll show um, that quickly as well. Um, for example, this picture shows the actual velocity um, of, of the air on the skin. Well, on the skin itself, obviously the velocity would be zero, but that's the velocity close to the skin. So it gives 
a good idea of uh, how much energy and air velocity is going around um, different areas of the car. You can see the blue areas are where the, the air is actually slowing down a lot. Uh, there's not much energy left. And then you've got uh, yellow to red zones where the air is accelerating. And that is the, the drive behind uh, change in static pressure, which is then uh, transformed into a force. And this is what the driver will feel um, when he's driving the car, and that's what uh, creates the, the pressure on the tires. Um, if we look at um, different views, the most interesting one really is the bottom of the car. And this is what we don't see from the outside when we look at the race on TV. But really, 80% uh, of what we are uh, trying to optimize is, is under the car. Um, the, the reason, again, is because of the ground effects. And uh, it's about managing the flow uh, quality going under the car, from starting from the front and downstream going towards the diffuser area uh, in, uh, in the floor. As you can see, the red areas are where the, the flow is accelerating, so, and that creates downforce, so front wing, the front area of the, of the floor. Uh, as you can see, this sort of high-speed flow is created because we, we put uh, what we call the barge bolts just in front of the, of the floor, uh, and that uh, naturally draws some air uh, under the floor, and then another area in, at the kick of the diffuser. Uh, what we don't see here is the rear wing, um, because it's on top, but obviously you can imagine it's the same happening. Um, the, the, really, the key to a Formula One car is to, is to make sure you carry energy and flow quality from front to back. It's very easy, obviously, to, to create a lot of downforce with your front wing, because the air quality is, is nearly 100%. You've got all the velocity and the pressure. Uh, but to have downforce in the diffuser and rear wing, it's, it's all about uh, managing the flow around the front tires, for example, and going under the, under the floor. Um, uh, and, and actually, the front wing itself uh, drives a lot of this flow quality going in the diffuser. So, so, for example, if we have to improve the diffuser, most of the time we will work on the front wing to make sure that the flow quality going into the diffuser is, is better. Uh, so that's looking at the, at, at the surface of the car. This is now the same, but static pressure, so effectively how much the air is pushing or pulling on the surface. Uh, and again, if we look under the car, we, we find again the areas of suction. Um, one thing that's very important as well is how the flow turns around the tires. So what is happening around the, the contact patches? And it's a combination of high pressure stagnation and acceleration of air creating suction and going around. And, and again, what you do with your front wing will change uh, this sort of uh, pressure distribution around your patch, contact patch. And in return, the flow behind the, the front wing will change. And, and it will actually have an effect in your diffuser. So it's, uh, it's not just locally we are looking at changing geometry to improve the car. It's, it's downstream effects a lot of the time. Um, I, I come back to this one. And I just, uh, to finish, I want to show this video of um, what we call total pressure, which is really, again, a combination of velocity and pressure. So you can, you can call it energy or, or quality of the air around the car. And as you can see, this is the front wing. So this is a section, and we're going to go through the car in, in the sort of x direction. Uh, the front wing sees a very high total pressure, so a lot of energy. Uh, and as we go through the car, this is the front wheels. And I carry on. This is the chassis with the helmets, the engine and now the rear wheels. And, and what you can see is that the flow is not anymore just red. It's, it's sort of yellow to, to green, so it's lost energy. And, and again, what we do at the front will change how much energy is going to the rear. And the good cars have got uh, basically high level of energy going, going to the end of the car. 
so it's just it's it's more than just optimizing a wing. It's really directing flow to the regions you, you're interested. And to finish, if if I want to know where to start working for the next sort of iteration, I will go back to this video and I will look at uh, areas where I'm losing energy. So if I if I scroll a little bit, for example here, you can see that the the front wing itself is on the edge of separating here. So this sort of bubble here will travel downstream and grow. So you will lose energy and, and affect the diffuser. If I carry on a little bit, the other interesting thing is this vorticity created, so high-speed rotational flow. Uh, these are helping you because they are they're sort of rotating the flow um, and, and they are not losing energy, but you can use them to, to um, direct the flow to where you want. Uh, but, uh, for example, I, this sort of this is a guide vein under the chassis. This is separating on the leading edge, and that will be detrimental to uh, to the rest of the car. So we would have to work on this area. This is a conceptual design. We spend a little bit of time, but there is a lot of work to do. As you can see, it will be just a matter of uh, fine tuning the angle of attack, maybe five degrees uh, here, or, you know, plus or minus, and and sort of uh, tidying up the flow in this area. And, and really, you have to do this everywhere on the car. Uh, same here, slight separation. So I'm going to stop here, but I think you get the idea of optimizing a Formula 1 car. Um, and, and what happens uh, to finish is that you always do one change at a time. So if you want to optimize the car, you will do only one change. You will um, in this example, adds uh, a second guide vein on the front wing, a smaller one, um, and look at the effects that it has on your forces and on, on your flow. Uh, for this change, uh, I think we get some results here, and you can see that uh, this is the forces acting on the front wing only, I think, uh, and it had an effect in terms of drag effects, so effectively slightly increasing the drag, uh, and also increasing the level of downforce. Um, you will want to look at the ratio of increase of downforce, in this case about 25, uh, uh, ratio to the increase of drag, which is about 2. So if, if you look at this ratio, 25 to 2, you will think this is positive. Uh, but what we haven't done here in this example is look at how much of a change it has on the overall car. Um, and that is how you will make your decision of keeping or not this modification. Um, and that's it for me, so I'll hand it uh, over to you, David. Great, Nick, thanks a lot. Um, Nick, would it be fine for you? Um, because there are, I mean, there, there are a lot of questions. Um, uh, Nick, would it, there are a few of them uh, specifically um, to you. Would it be fine for you that you answer quickly um, two or three of them? Yeah, of course. I would say them. Um, the first one is, do you have any advice to graduate engineers that want to get into motorsports? Uh, you know, it's an industry where uh, you've got uh, a lot more people wanting to get into uh, for the number of opportunities. So you have to fight your way in. Uh, it's never easy at the beginning. So, you know, it's about um, uh, making sure that's what you want to do and keep you know, keep your heads down and uh, grab the first opportunity. And once you're in, then you have to do a good job. But uh, uh, yeah, it, you know, don't get disappointed if it doesn't arrive straight away. But um, uh, once the opportunity comes, it's it's great. So uh, yeah, that's what I would say. Good, thanks. Um, the another one was I'm not sure. No, I think it, it's also especially if you since you have a lot of experience with CFD in Formula One car design. Um, what uh, uh, one user asks, how much is the difference between CFD and reality? Oh yeah, uh, there is a difference. You know, a wind tunnel model is is a model. Uh, a CFD model is another model. Actually, the CF, the wind tunnel model is different to the real car as well. So there are always differences between models. Um, but what I have to say is, from my experience, is uh, you, the correlate, what we call correlation, which is how close the CFD is to the real car or to the wind tunnel car. Uh, you can have, you can find dif 
discrepancies and differences, but in localized area and mainly around the, the compact patch of the tire on the ground and things like that. So once you know that, uh, you will decide to use CFD extensively for some areas and maybe you'll have to, to check. You always will have to validate and check on the real car that what you think was positive is positive. But overall, I have to say, and uh, that's why the industry is moving more and more to CFD, uh, you know, the models are getting much better and it's, it's getting good enough to, uh, to develop the car. It's very good. All right, thanks. Um, so as we are already 20 minutes over time, um, I would now make sure that we quickly explain um, the homework assignment um, and afterwards then um, stay around a bit to answer as many questions as we can. But um, obviously there are way too many questions, um, then, um, but we'll, we'll try to, to do our best. Um, okay. So let's dive into the homework assignment. Um, the idea again is really um, not, let, let's say, as, as Nick just pointed out, um, the homework assignment will really be just about a front wing um, uh, aerodynamic analysis. The main reason is um, to keep to keep it simple. Um, and as he already pointed out, um, it won't be um, it won't tell you um, exactly how the how it interacts with the car, um, how the flow will then be basically with this new kind of front wing will um, end up around the whole car. But um, so it's really supposed to be um, an, a Formula One car applied, but um, rather, let's say, an, a first um, simple step into aerodynamics analysis. And so um, what we suggest as a, as a homework or what we offer is just that you um, will provide you with the download link for um, <clears throat> for a public project on SimScale um, that can you can import that one and in there you will find these um, two versions of a um, of the front wing and um, it basically asks you one option is just to simulate the flow around it um, really it's really about you so there is no constraints feel free what kind of um, velocity you're interested in and um, just to, to really get your let's say your your hands onto simulation and um, a level two could be and that would be really exciting also for our simulation library is if you um, either design your own um, your own front wing or um, as we did here just tweaked um, the one a bit so you can see that um, there we we generated the modified version um, just as a suggestion um, we didn't we didn't check on the uh, official reglement etc so it's really just um, just an a, a, let's say a training or a, um, a, a small task to dive into simulation. And so the level two would then really be to, to, to redesign a front wing or modify it and, and check on how it um, impacts the aerodynamic performance of the, of the front wing. Um, here, um, also a suggestion because SimScale is really, SimScale is just about simulation on, um, sim, on the SimScale platform. You always need a, a, a CAT model. You upload the CAT model and then start simulating. You cannot model there. So you need to model somewhere else. And either, um, I, I guess some of you guys already have access to a 3D uh, modeling software. What we can um, also hint you to is there is a um, web-based uh, CAT system called OnShape. It's currently in beta. So this is not our software, this, um, you can find it at onshape.com um, and here you can basically have a, a 3D modeler completely in your web browser and we could now start tweaking this a bit um, and I, I don't want to give a demo on this but um, this could also be some software since SimScale is web-based, OnShape is also web-based which might, can, could make sense um, for you guys to, to tweak the model or to even, to even design it in here. Um, it also all comes with a free plan but as um, they are currently in beta it might um, be that you, don't in, that you don't get the access immediately. But um, since you have a weak time, you don't need to have the, the new model immediately, right? Okay, um, just to show you what we then did, we ran a simulation and you can see this is the modified version, this is the modified version and Nick already pointed out um, that we have some differences in the downforce um, and it's just really about, it's really about you um, starting with simulation so there is no strict control, no strict uh, regulation, just um, ha have fun with SimScale and, and try to get your hands on simulation and run your first um, analysis, right? This is really what, what it is about um, in, this, in this homework. Okay, um, then we are at the official <laughs> question and answers. And um, so the official part, ah, l last point, um, where can you find um, this project? I hopefully my colleagues already have it uh, put online. So there on the registration page, here, 
Um, so whenever one workshop is over, you can see under the agenda, here is the, um, the homework assignment. Um, so homework assignment, it's basically a public project. So you need to have an account on SimScale. If you don't have one, create it here via the sign up button and you can then click on here and it will import a project into your, um, into your workspace where you can find the Wing CAD model to, to experience it um, yourself. Um, all right, uh, so then now to the official question and answers, there have been a few. And Nick, I'm not sure how much time you have, uh, so whatever you need to go, feel free. Um, Mila, oh, uh, me? I'm, I'm fine, no problem. All right, great, um, cool. Okay, um, there are some more questions for you, Nick, would that be fine? So I, because I think, um, I mean, we are always here around and we will also be around for the next workshop, so I guess we might, we should make sure that we ask you all the questions we can. Um, yep. uh, give me one second. Ah, um, the one user asks uh, Nick that um, uh, you, that I think your simulation, the simulation results you showed were simulating the whole car, right? So not a symmetric, a symmetric wind tunnel, right? Yes, that's right. Um, and he said he would expect the flow to be uh, symmetric. Why is it, is it not symmetric? Because he he saw some uh, non-symmetric structures. Uh, I have to say the uh, that person is very uh, very good observer. <laughs> <laughs> you see the asymmetry. There, there is an asymmetry, and uh, what well, first of all uh, to develop the car, we tend to run a full car purely because um, we do quite a lot of uh, tests when we put yo and steer angle on the car uh, to, just to simulate different conditions. So obviously we need a full car for this. So we tend to run full car all the time, uh, which obviously needs a lot more computing power. Um, but the other thing is, uh, because of the, as the asymmetry of the flow comes from the fact that um, purely the model will generate slightly different flow left to right, because you find that the convergence is not always going to the same state, uh, especially in areas like uh, near the, the wheel contact patches. Uh, and that, that in itself creates an, an asymmetry. But it's 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 quite realistic because you have to know that the flow is not uh, steady. Even though we are simulating a steady state flow, it's it's obviously the turbulence model creates this sort of left to right uh, differences, uh, which is another reason for simulating a full car because you you end up with an average force. Basically, you simulate twice the same model and gives you a better average answer if that makes sense. Great, thanks. Um, the next one, Nick, uh, I saw engineers painted some flow uh, visualization on um, F1 cars during testing. Um, so I guess some oil uh, patterns. Can we view the flow vis pattern in CFD as well? Yes, absolutely. It's called uh, the oil flow. Uh, it's a very uh, useful tool for uh, the, the designer or the engineer. Uh, and actually, yeah, the, the picture you can see is exactly the same as what we would do on the real car when we put the oil on the car. So it, the oil is filled with very tiny particles, and um, and the airflow will push these particles and, and show you actually the, the path of the flow on the surface. Um, so first, one thing is to look at the direction of the flow locally, but the more interesting thing is to look at areas where the flow will be attached. Uh, if the rear wing is a, is a good example, we don't have it on the picture, but never mind. It, the rear wing is very close to separating because we run it at a very high angle of attack uh, for generating more, you know, more downforce. Uh, but if you go too far, the flow will, will actually separate from the surface. And the, the oil will show you that because uh, from a clean sort of path and, and array of lines, suddenly it will stop and it will become like a, a messy sort of uh, picture and you can see exactly where the flow separates. So that's why we use the oil flow and in the CFD post-processing we have exactly the same oil flow so you can compare as well. Interesting, all right. Um, so there's another question, pretty, pretty detailed. Um, uh, uh, Nick, can you please explain the aerodynamics about the Brabham fan car? Oh, you, the, uh, the classic car, the, the old car. Yeah, I guess. Uh, um, shall I... Sh <laughs> I think I see which car uh, that, that person uh, mentioned. It's, it's, it's like a Hoover, isn't it? It's like uh, 
it's it's got a fan that basically uh, yeah. sucks the air from under the car and, and sort of extract that air at the back. Uh, it's it's purely just to uh, to increase this sort of uh, ground effect and suction level under the car. So um, if at, this is something we are not allowed to do anymore. So we generate downforce from a suction level of minus one to minus two static pressure coefficient under the car. But if you if you are able to to suck air out of this region with with this sort of fan system, then you can generate even greater suction levels minus. Four, five CP. So um, that that was the idea. Interesting. Um, another <laughs> question, Nick. <laughs> um, Nick, would you see a time when CFD would completely replace wind tunnel testing for a competitive team? Uh, in Formula One, at the moment, uh, no. Um, not just now, but uh, you have to know first of all that uh, aircrafts, airliners are completely designed in CFD and then they are just tested first time full scale. Um, with maybe a bit of wind tunnel, but they rely on CFD. For lower categories in motorsport, they start to rely only on CFD for uh, cost reasons uh, and it works uh, for them. And actually the uh, in LMP1, uh, there, there is an existing car that's been only designed in CFD, so it's coming. In Formula 1, uh, it will come. Um, but it's still sort of 50-50 because, uh, as in 50% wind tunnels, it's 50% CFD. Um, purely, uh, again, because of um, the refinement of the model you need and the computer power, um, it will, when, when we get cheaper computer power in the near future, I think CFD will start to overtake wind tunnel, yes. Right. Um, thanks a lot. Um, uh, yeah, probably that's half a question to you, <laughs> Nick, and half a question to, to us here at Zinska. Does the software take uh, into consideration the suspension movement and flex of wings, etc., when wind speed increases? Um, okay. First, from our end, so the simulation we just set up, definitely not. It's just a flow analysis, so it's basically all the, the, all the boundaries are fixed, and there is no interaction between um, the fluid and the structure computed for. Um, and Nick, I guess uh, the results you showed as well, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, we the, the bodywork or the surface or the mesh, we, that's what we have at the end. The mesh in CFD is not going to move, it's not going to flex um, as we apply pressure on it because there's no sort of structure behind. But um, but we do put the car in the in the right um, attitude, and the suspension movement is. Basically, we set the wheel and the suspension to the right position for a certain um, ride height and, and roll and yaw situation. So the suspension is effectively in the right location for different conditions, but, but, the, but the bodywork is not going to flex. But you can do another simulation where you, um, you basically uh, tweak your geometry to what, you, what your stress analysis has um, uh, sort of simulated for deflection, and you will run that model stiff, but effectively in the sort of um, flexed, you know, geometry condition. So that can give you a, an effect, and we do that a lot in Formula One just to check effectively this sort of uh, flexibility effect on the car. Nice, um, Nick. When you <laughs> when you're running out of words, let us know. But uh, the questions keep on coming. Um, we'll try to cover a few more. Um, but then I guess yeah. It's really, yeah okay. <laughs> and okay. Um, another question coming in. Um, what is the minimum scale you can use in a wind tunnel for having um, good correlation between the CFD simulation and the wind tunnel results? Because I think you mentioned that um, there's also um, that the wind tunnel models are also smaller, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Basically, in Formula One, people uh, run 60%. Uh, first of all, you are not allowed to run more than 60% just to reduce, uh, to control the costs. Um, and you can run, some teams run 50%. That's what we used to run before, now it's 60%. Um, the, the accuracy of the model will, will go to the square of the size of the model, so you can imagine that 60% is much better than 50%. Um, but the, the cost to actually build the model is also to the square or to the cube of the rather because it will be dependent on volume. So 
all in all, to say that people run 60%, it's better accuracy, but you also need a bigger wind tunnel because you don't want the walls to be too close to your model. Uh, that's what we call the blockage. Um, so so that's, that's where we are. All right. Um, Nick, do you agree with Christian Horner that FIA should ban wind tunnels? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <laughs> we weren't sure yeah, if we no, should. No, I, know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we should uh, ban things this way. I think naturally wind tunnels. At the moment, uh, teams have invested in wind tunnels, and these investments in wind tunnels are for maybe 20 or 30 years. So you cannot ask a company who's invested in a wind tunnel five or ten years ago to stop it now. It doesn't make sense as a business. Um, so we have to respect that. Uh, so I don't think it's a great idea, but um, naturally wind tunnels are going to disappear. Not not you know in the very short term, but long term with CFD we, we won't use wind tunnel anymore, and I think we will do what I intend to do with the LMP1 and uh, maybe Formula 1 is to go directly from developing in CFD to build a, a full-size car and, and validate aerodynamically the car on, on the racetrack and maybe do some final adjustments that you will need but on the real car. And that's probably the most efficient way to do it at the moment, especially in LMP1. Um, yeah. Great, thanks a lot. Um, I think we could um, go on like that for years, or, or at least quite some time, Nick. Um, there are also a lot of questions regarding SimScale. I would quickly jump in here, um, answer a few of them, um, but and maybe also the, the most top-level ones, um, because um, yeah, there are quite a, a few. Um, so l let's quickly dive into it. So which solver do you use? Open foam? Question mark. Um, yes, the simulation you saw um, was carried out in the back end with open foam. Um, however, SimScale is basically um, integrates with different solvers. So over the next webinars, um, there will also be finite element analysis um, uh, for uh, solid mechanics and also thermal. Um, problems and there other solvers will be used. Um, so, but the analysis we saw, yes, this was um, carried out with open foam. Um, another question regarding the platform is, does it accept only STL files? Um, uh, the answer is not no. So the, the the car model you saw, we uploaded as an STL file. Um, but there is also the option that you upload um, real BRAP models, so real solid models um, with via these generic um, data exchange formats, STEP and IGES. Um, but depending on which measure you'll use, um, depending on what kind of problem you're, um, you're simulating, it's, it's sometimes easier to work with STL. Um, just this is why in this case we used it. Uh, another question. Um, uh, no. Okay, um, somebody is asking Paraview for free? Uh, question mark. Yes, um, Paraview can be downloaded simply on um, on Paraview.org. Um, some other question. Um, ah, um, okay. Um, could you explain a little bit about parallel processing? As I understood you, um, we will be pro uh, will be providing a cloud for the computations. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm right, how? Then how many processes can we can each of us use uh, choose? And so um, SimScale basically gives you access to um, so basically abstracts you from all the management of the of the computing power in the back end. So you are free up to 32 core machines. These are the standard um, machines on SimScale. Um, and the yeah you you can use them and um, when yeah, if customers need more larger machines that's also possible but that's um, not anymore the standard machines um, do that and yes it's basically um, most or actually all solvers and most meshes are parallelized so this means they leverage um, multiple cores um, for the processing uh, um, all right. Maybe that's it for the SimScale specific question. Some other were if we offer FSI, so fluid structure interaction. Um, that was also asked if the if the wing um, if the if the if the, if the wing is moving under the um, force generated by the air, etc. And this is currently not possible on SimScale, so there is no um, FSI. <clears throat> 
uh, right now available. Um, but we are basically, I mean, we are um, working. Uh, we are working a lot to uh, enable more features, to provide more features. And as it's everything is um, web-based, um, basically these updates come very frequently. And um, FSI is also on the roadmap. Um, um, uh, all right. Um, so then, um, the last point I wanted to hint you to. Um, so I'm, I'm very sorry for all the questions that could not be answered. We try to uh, dig through them and, and um, um, look if we can hint you to some uh, central uh, yeah, points where you can get more information about SimScale. And hopefully, Nick, um, we can um, get you for uh, some other webinar in the near future as well, because there would be uh, a few <laughs> several additional questions for you as well. But um, at this point, I just wanted to quickly um, show you some uh, things um, where you can now get more help uh, and, and get a read up what you might not have seen so far. So there is um, the project library. <clears throat> on SimScale, where you can import all these projects. And here you can see, for example, Nick, I guess you know that car here as well, right? Yes, that's right. That's how <laughs> NMC one car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so you you can basically hear um, are a lot of demo projects that have been simulated on SimScale. And you can basically pick one and import it. Huh? And then you can see many different features being used at a real simulation um, project. And um, there's also another Formula One car, also for structural mechanics. And here you can really dig into and see, ah, I didn't get how he did that, or I'm not sure how to do this. Here can you really um, dig into more um, projects um, if you if you uh, yeah can't find um, anything and then there's the official documentation where um, you can uh, search and read a lot up um, there's um, there are a lot of tutorials in the documentation for meshing also for um, fluid dynamics so for example um, here's um, a uh, bear with me for a second analysis fluid um, turbulent airflow around the spoiler so here's a very similar example um, set up step by step what to do etc um, so the documentation is another point um, to go to and last but not least we have a YouTube channel and um, simply go to our um, to Sims uh, to YouTube and search for um, Search for YouTube. I think there's also yeah. There we go. Here's this is our YouTube channel, and here you can also find a bunch of um, online tutorials, video tutorials that you can follow up um, um, to work with it, you know, to to learn it. So these are basically points where you can dive into it. Um, other, otherwise, feel free to drop us a line, and um, we're happy to um, to assist you. Ah, ah, another point, Mila just hinted me to, last point I wanted to show you, um, is how to share your project. So let's assume you've imported, uh, wrong. let's assume you've imported um, a, what's happened here, okay, I need to check on this, let's assume you imported um, the, the homework uh, project, so we will see this wing model that you can now start meshing, etc. And you've completed your simulation, and now you want to share um, that with SimScale um, with, with us. Then you can go into the workspace and say share, and go share project. And here you can say um, you can share a project with the with the SimScale team, and you can say workshops at SimScale. Um, my SimScale team um, here find here my homework or something, and then we'll basically get a copy of your project and um, can look into it. Um, whatever questions you might have, feel free to address at um, support at simscale.com or um, uh, check on the documentation, um, the YouTube uh, channel, or um, the library. All right. Um, then again, <laughs> last words from from my side. Again, I'm uh, sorry for the tactical issues we had in the beginning. I hope um, uh, we nevertheless could um, make a good uh, webinar for you, a good session. Um, we'll meet basically in one week next Thursday at the same time, and um, they will uh, take on the next uh, simulation um, of an F1 car. All right, um, Nick. Special thanks to you. Thanks uh, a lot for taking the time and, and uh, explaining your work. Um, I really recommend visiting the website of uh, Nick. Um, and um, yeah, so thanks a lot, everybody. And see you next Thursday. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.